Hey everyone! With Balan Wonderworld releasing in one month, I wanted to take a little time to talk about the demo, people's criticism of it, and why, to me, the game still has a lot of potential. Now don't get me wrong, I acknowledge that this game is by no means perfect and that there are some issues with it. However, if we look a little deeper at the game, I think you'll be surprised to see how much potential it really has. Before I get into everything, I just wanted to say I really appreciate everyone's support lately and I'm nearing 250 subscribers here on YouTube. If I can hit 250 subscriber goal or surpass it before March 26th when Battle and Wonder World comes out, I'll give away one copy of the game on your platform of choice. Info for how to enter will be in the pinned comment below. Thank you again so much. Alright, let's get into it. If you haven't had a chance to try out the demo yet, I would highly suggest trying it after watching this video. It will give you a really good idea of what the final game will be like. You get to play through the entire first world, so that's Act 1 and 2 and the boss fight. You'll also get to sample Act 1 from both World 4 and 6. This lets you collect costumes, drops, and play the Ball and Bouts. You'll also get to find and feed Tims and interact on the hub world, the Isle of Tims. All in all, there's quite a bit to do in this demo and I applaud Square Enix for including that much. Now getting into the finer details about the demo and the game overall, I feel it's probably best to address the concerns I personally have and have seen popping up all over Twitter and YouTube about the game. I don't want this to be a really negative video as I want to focus on more of the positives, so I'll try and keep these complaints short and sweet. The biggest complaints I have myself and that I've seen online are the slow movement and stiff animations, not being able to jump in all costumes, control scheme being too simple or too easy and only being one button, how long the animations take to change costumes, and if they could remove the keys because they're pretty much useless to unlock costumes. Let's go over these in a little bit more detail really quickly. Slow movement and not being able to jump in all costumes are by far the most common complaints I have seen online about Battle and Wonderworld, and I definitely felt the same myself playing through the demo. I remember seeing the gameplay footage from the PS5 event in Japan some months back and thinking to myself it looked like the characters were trying their best to run really hard, yet they didn't seem to be moving much. I just hoped that it was something that was being lost in the capture of the footage and was simply because I wasn't playing the game myself. Well sadly, it wasn't an optical illusion and the characters really do run slowly in this game, and there's no real control over that. There's no run or sprint button, you're just always moving at the same speed. Certain costumes in the final game will most likely increase this speed for us, which will be a nice change of pace, but overall it does feel like there should be more control of the speed of the characters and we should be able to move faster. Not being able to jump in each costume is a really difficult one for me, as I can see both sides here. This also ties into another complaint that every button does the exact same thing. You use the left analog stick to move, the right analog stick to control the camera, L1 and R1 to change costumes, and then every other button is the do something button. This do something is controlled by what costume you're currently wearing, and some of those costumes will do something like shoot a fireball, therefore will not be able to jump. You can simply change to another costume that can jump, but here we get into another one of the complaints, that the animation for switching costumes takes too long. It locks you in place and takes a couple seconds just to complete. This means you can't string together costume abilities, which if you could do this quickly, would be insanely cool. From a design perspective, I can see why they wanted to go this way. If every costume could jump, you would eliminate the need for a lot of them, as I could use something like the Dainty Dragon costume almost all the time to run, jump, and shoot to break blocks as I needed. Yes, I'd still switch when needing to make longer jumps or something, but this would take away a lot of the puzzle solving and the need to use each costume for their specific ability. However, on the flip side, we've been trained and conditioned that in almost all games, power-ups are just those. Power-ups. They're supposed to augment your existing skills, not replace or remove abilities from you. So this does feel like a dramatic change and is something a little difficult to wrap my head around. This do something button also makes the game then feel very simple or too easy, and I know this will be a big turn off for a lot of people. My biggest gripe with this one button for everything is that it even actually carries over into the menu. There's no cancel or back button, only a confirm button. This means to navigate the menus, you have to scroll to a specific back or cancel button just to return to the previous screen, and it is really frustrating. 
The last big complaint that we'll talk about here before getting to the good stuff is the key system. To use each costume, you must first unlock it with a key. These keys are usually right beside the costume or not very far away, and if they are, they're not well hidden, so they seem pretty pointless in terms of needing to do something. Why can't we just pick up the costume? Why do we need to unlock them anyways? The keys respawn after a short while, so the fact that we need to keep picking them up just seems like busy work for no real reason. Removing them from the game wouldn't hurt the gameplay at all, it would probably just save us some time and make things seem a little faster. Okay, well that seems like a lot of negatives. I think if you take time to play through the game in the demo, you'll find that there are a lot more positives and reasons why I think we should all give it a chance. Aesthetics. The first thing that probably drew you to checking out Balan Wonderworld is the beautiful CG cutscenes and the really cute character models. There's so much charm in the design of these characters, costumes, and worlds that it just seems so inviting and makes you want to learn more about them. Each world has a very different look and feel, which keeps things fresh and fun with different mechanics, costumes, and characters. It just makes you want to know more and more about each world and its inhabitants. Music. The music in Balan Wonderworld is really amazing from what we've heard so far. The game itself is supposed to be centered around the theater and has numerous musical acts, dance numbers, and just overall some really great original music. You especially will notice this in areas like the Balan Bouts or World 4, which have some really cool music. Gameplay From a gameplay perspective, Balan Wonderworld is a 3D platform action adventure game. This is actually something it does really well for the most part. Despite not being able to run and adjust the speed of your jumps, the sections we do see in the demo show a lot of promise. World 1 is fairly simple with very basic jump puzzles, but Act 2 includes interesting ideas like using the warped, curled world to roll a ball into a hole that unlocks a door. In World 4, we get to do a bunch of fun floating and jumping around with the soaring sheep costume and the many fans placed throughout the world. We even get to fly from balloon to balloon with the Aero Acrobat costume. In World 6, there's some more traditional style platforming sections, jumping over gears, avoiding swinging pendulums, and just overall feels really solid. In these three worlds, we see a drastic change in the way we play each stage, the way the costumes interact with the world, and it's all really solid. I'm really excited to see what other mechanics will be introduced in the other worlds. There's also some other cool little features that we don't even know a lot about yet. We know that they've added in a photo mode, so we'll be able to actually go around and take photos of all these different worlds and the cool little characters. There's also the mini games that you can find and unlock in the different stages, so bowling, golf, soccer, baseball. All of those add a little variation and a little extra fun to the gameplay. Battles. To me, Balan Wonderworld is more of a platforming game rather than a fighting or a combat focused game. As such, the battles are fairly simple, just like they are in other games like Super Mario. Most enemies can be defeated in one hit, which you can usually do by simply jumping on their head, but with 80 different costumes to use, there are a bunch of other possibilities as well. Not a lot of people seem to be talking about, or maybe they're just not recognizing, the sheer amount of variety of ways you can approach combat. In a lot of the different encounters, you'll notice the enemy using a specific type of attack on you. While you can usually just dodge this attack and wait for an opening to jump on their head, or spin into them or something like that, a lot of these attacks can be countered if you're using the corresponding costume. For instance, you'll face an enemy that throws tornadoes at you. While you can easily dodge these and get close for an attack, you can actually just throw on the whirling wolf costume and spin jump into the tornado. This sends it back at the enemy, damaging them much faster than getting close to it. Finding these kinds of combinations in the rest of the worlds will be really interesting, and I can't wait to come back to the earlier stages with different costumes to see what other combinations we can find. Mysteries Possibly the biggest potential I see in this game, and something that really brought me back to the demo to keep playing it over and over again, was simply the mystery of the game. There's so many things that are not explained or hidden throughout the game that are left to be uncovered, and this by itself is really exciting. Each act has a certain number of costumes, balance statues, a balance bout, and potential minigame costumes to find. Plus, there are also drops and tims to find in each stage, so there are literally things all over to discover. A lot of these can be found your first time through the stage if you pay enough attention and use the costumes you find to their fullest. However, some of these require you to revisit the stages again with costumes found in different worlds. 
This will let you unlock new paths for you to explore. Or you can even play in co-op, which lets you jump higher and combine caution abilities to get to really hard to reach places. I had so much fun combing through each stage of the demo, looking for costumes hidden out of sight, or finding interesting ways to use the costume abilities, in both the ways that they're intended and sometimes not, to reach the different balance statues and costumes that we hadn't seen before. Plus, I was able to find costumes that have abilities that we don't even know what they do yet, like the Metal Bad Boy. This kind of exploration and puzzle solving really gives the world's replayability and a whole extra layer of fun. Speaking of mysteries, the Isle of Tim has way more to do than what most people think. Not only is it a hub world where you can launch each stage, but you can feed and interact with your Tims here. If you feed them enough drops, they get larger. Once large enough, they can actually breed or lay an egg by throwing another Tim at them. This egg then hatches and you've got another Tim. Cool, right? Well, let's add another layer to it. Depending on what color drops you're feeding them, they can change colors. Breed the specific colors together, and the babies then can be hatched with these special badges that represent one of the color drops. What do these badges do? I have no idea, but it's a whole other meta that a lot of people don't even realize exists. Also, the Tims themselves seem to have life cycles, so after a while they will grow and die or disappear. This means breeding and growing the perfect Tims is an ongoing activity you'll be doing for your whole journey. Plus, Tims can also have special hats, which may be just cosmetic, but again, it's another variation and special touch that adds more fun to the game. The mysteries on the Isle of Tims don't stop there though. There's a statue of a large Tim in the middle that you can feed a special rainbow drop. Feed it enough of these, the statue moves, eventually opening up completely. You can actually see a video of this that I posted a while back here and how to get the special drops. What does the statue do when fully open? I'm not sure, but it shows a Tim with a crown and I haven't been able to get a Tim that looks like that yet. Maybe we can breed the ultimate Tim and it will have a crown and do something with the statue? Who knows? There's also the Tim Tower on the island that we don't know what it does when you max it out, so it's going to be really cool to see what it does in the full game. Plus, there's a Balan costume floating way up high on the island above Tim Island. How do we get there and get the costume? Will we get there when we max out the Tim Tower? Or maybe when we breed the Tim with a crown? Maybe we just get it at the end of the game. These are all things that I want to know, and only from playing and exploring the full game are we going to find these things out. Last up on my list of mysteries that keep bringing me back to this game are the stories. Each world revolves around a different person and a different problem they've had in their life, which caused them to be brought to Wonder World. A lot of these stories will hit close to home for a lot of people out there, and they deal with some really touchy subjects, so finding out the stories of all these people and how they're resolved in the end will be really interesting. We already have an idea of what the stories of Worlds 1 through 9 are, which you can find in the breakdowns in my other videos, which will be linked in the description down below. So check them out if you haven't already, and let me know which story you identify with most in the comments down below. So what can Square Enix do, or what do I think of the game overall? Well, what we have here is a game with some obvious problems. Are they game breaking? In most cases, no. The gameplay itself is a little slower than I would personally like, and it can be a little frustrating at times. But is that enough to stop me from exploring these worlds and learning all we can? No, probably not. I would also like to point out that the demo we're playing right now is also probably about 4 months old. It looks like the same build that they were playing back in October when we first saw the gameplay, so there is the potential for things to have changed since then. I wouldn't expect anything drastically different, but enough time to polish a lot of the rough edges and hopefully add some of the quality of life features. If they fix the amount of time it takes to change costumes, not being able to jump with each costume wouldn't be that big of a deal and it would make using all the different costumes together a lot more interesting. Being locked in one place for a few seconds each time switching is really the problem as being able to string together the costume abilities would feel amazing. The key issue here isn't a deal breaker for me. I would really like it if they could remove them since they do seem pretty pointless, but if it's not changed it's not that big of an inconvenience. Ultimately, a lot of the people's concerns and problems with the game are justified, and I won't deny or belittle that. I just think there's a lot more to this game than what people may be seeing at face value, and it will give a lot of hours of fun and exploration. I really do hope that people will give it a fair chance, and if you don't want to play it at launch at full price, maybe when it goes on sale, grab a copy and jump into the magical world of Balan Wonderworld. Let me know what you think, or if you'll be picking it up at launch in the comment section down below. And as always, happy gaming.